Hi guys, it's Claire, and I'm here today to do the nonfiction November 2017 tag. I was kindly tagged by Vanessa over at Split Reads, and seeing that nonfiction November is almost over, let's get into it. The first question is give some shout out love to one of your favorite nonfiction booktubers. And for that, I am going to have to go with Vanessa from Split Reads, who tagged me, but she is my go-to person for nonfiction. She reads so much nonfiction, and I think we have really similar tastes and interests. And she also reads a lot of kind of current nonfiction, especially nonfiction dealing with social and political topics. She's fantastic and really thoughtful and smart. And I also wanted to mention Heidi from My Reading Life because I've recently been watching her videos and she reads a lot of really interesting nonfiction books. She recently made a video about magazine reading and kind of how to incorporate reading more long form magazine pieces into her booktubing and discussion about reading and that's a really awesome video. Definitely check her out as well. The second question is why do you read nonfiction? And for me, you know, nonfiction isn't something that I ever have to consciously think of picking up because it's something that I'm just kind of inherently interested in. And I think a lot of that has to do with the idea of history and context. I really like to study art and culture and literature and criticism in the context in which they are created and occur. Because I think for me, understanding the history and the context of a piece of art makes it that much richer and more interesting and meaningful, at least to me. Fiction can be really incredible at conveying emotional truths, but I think there's something about nonfiction books or primary sources that kind of offer you these little throbbing heartbeats from the past that I think can be as transporting, if not more transporting, than any fiction. And that's not to knock fiction, that's just to say I think nonfiction encompasses so many different kinds of books and I just love it so much. So question three has to do with the nonfiction November theme of home, and that is where in your home do you most like to read? And that's on my couch, which isn't especially cute, but it has molded itself to my form, and that's all that really matters. Question number four is give a nonfiction recommendation set in or about your home country. And for that, I want to recommend a couple of American travelogues, the first being The Lost Continent by Bill Bryson, in which he chronicles his search for kind of the quintessential perfect small town in America. And Bill Bryson is super sardonic and hilarious, and this book has one of the best opening lines, which is, I come from Des Moines, somebody had to. And I also want to recommend Travels with Charlie by John Steinbeck, which is his 1960 book about driving around America with his pet dog Charlie. It contains a lot of really beautiful descriptions of a lot of different parts of the country and different states, and I read it earlier this year and enjoyed it a lot. Question number five is, which book on your nonfiction November TBR related to home are you most excited about reading about? One of my most anticipated books that I had this year about home was Evicted by Matthew Desmond, which is about housing in Milwaukee, which is the largest city in my home state of Wisconsin, and I think it's a really excellent book that is really an important read, especially if you're trying to understand sort of housing inequality in America. Question number six is, what do you love to read most in nonfiction? I I guess I would say that I'm often quite drawn to essay collections, and I also don't shy away from denser nonfiction books that cover social, culture, political history, or sort of primary source nonfiction from earlier periods. I also really like books about nature and the outdoors. Question number seven is give a nonfiction recommendation related to the word love, and for that I'm going to have to go with A Lover's Discourse Fragments by Roland Barthes. He was a French philosopher and literary theorist and critic, and this book covers kind of all the different topics and emotions wrapped up in being a quote-unquote lover. Eight is what love-related nonfiction book are you most excited to read from your nonfiction TBR? And this might be a stretch, but I really want to read the book So We Read On by Maureen Corrigan of NPR, which is about 
quote, how The Great Gatsby came to be and why it endures. And apparently Maureen Corrigan really loves The Great Gatsby. I really loved it in high school. High school curricula in America in general loves The Great Gatsby. And so I thought it would be kind of cool to go back and reread The Great Gatsby and then read this book after that to kind of take a closer look at it. And I have to say that I got this recommendation from none other than MVP commenter Tortoise Dreams. Question number nine is, who is a person of substance who you have loved reading more about? I have read a lot about JFK. When I was like in sixth grade, I was assigned to do a biography book report and I went to the local library and picked up a biography literally at random. It didn't have a dust jacket or anything and it was called Young John Kennedy and I became almost overnight like a JFK fanatic. And although I like to think that now my sort of rose-colored glasses about Camelot and the Kennedys have cleared a bit. I was definitely like a JFK fangirl to the nth degree for much of my sort of teenage years in the way that people my age or even booktubers to this day are obsessed with Harry Potter. That was literally how I felt about JFK. I know people are like, oh, I cried so much when Dobby died. Like, I cried so much when I watched the Zapruder film. I actually looked up the Harry Potter book tag a while ago and was like, oh, I could totally adapt this and make it like the JFK book tag and answer all of the questions. At least I like know a lot about the Cuban Missile Crisis now. The next question is what book would you recommend to people that has a lot of substance to it? I would recommend the two books that are my top nonfiction reads of the year so far. And the first is We Were Eight Years in Power by ta Coates, which I just did a review on. I would also recommend yet again, Love Thy Neighbor, A Story of War by Peter Moss, which I read earlier this fall. And it's about the Bosnian War in the early early 90s and it's a phenomenal book. The next question is which book related to substance are you most excited about on your nonfiction TBR? And that would be the new Jim Crow Mass Incarceration in the Age of Colorblindness by Michelle Alexander. And that's the next book on my audiobook queue. So I'll hopefully be getting to that soon. Question 12 is what subjects or topics have you learned a lot about because of nonfiction? One thing that I got kind of into a few years ago was reading a lot about kind of actors in the 1950s and method acting and kind of that whole revolution in acting. So I kind of read a lot about James Dean and Marlon Brando. And then that kind of also takes you down different rabbit holes of like the Hays Code era of Hollywood and the Red Scare and the Blacklist and a lot of like fascinating stuff that happened in Hollywood in the mid centuries Question 13 is what book would you recommend that would teach somebody something well? I haven't actually read this book yet, but simply based on mass weight, I would say Toward Democracy by James T. Kloppenberg, which I do want to read at some point. Um, but yeah, I think it'll be a great book about democracy. Question 14 is what book related to scholarship are you most excited to read? I would have to say Race and Reunion, The Civil War in American Memory by David Blight. I'm listening right now to his Yale Open Courses lectures about the Civil War, which you can access online or through the podcast app. And it's been really fascinating. And I like how he kind of dispels some misinterpretations of history that have persisted. So I'm really excited to get to his book because I have heard fantastic things about it. And lastly, who do you tag? I feel like nonfiction November is basically over and I'm getting this tag in like right under the wire. So if anybody out there hasn't done this already or is interested, consider yourself tagged and happy nonfiction November to you all.